Welcome to the episode of Locked In. In this episode, I'm gonna be telling you guys how to do a custom fade paint job on your bicycle in just a few easy steps. So if you wanna figure out how to get this kind of cool paint job and even do a variation of your very own, please stay tuned. So in this video, I'm gonna go in over the basics of how to achieve a fade paint job. Now in this video, I will be using a Cobalt Warhawk gravel carbon frame. And if you wanna check out more about that bike, there's gonna be a link for that in the description below. Now what I wanted to achieve for Cobalt, since this paint job is actually for them, is a front facing fade from a blue to a black. Now, everything I mentioned in this video can be applied in any different variety of colors, as well as if you wanna do a top to bottom fade, if you wanna do a triple fade, I will be mentioning all those things since I did create a triple fade on my Poseidon X frame set, as you guys have seen in that build series as well. All these things mentioned in this video will be applied in any variation. There's just a few little tips and tricks between those that I'll be mentioning as we go forward. So first off, the first thing I always mention in all my paint videos is preparation is literally the most important part of this process. So preparation will vary depending on the condition of your frame and the current status of it. So if you are starting with a bare carbon frame or a frame that's never been scratched or has any scuffs or anything on it, you can simply just scuff the complete frame down with a gray scotch brite that you can get at any hardware store or paint supply store. This will give you a nice tooth for the paint to bite into since you do need some kind of texture for the paint to stick. It cannot be fully slick. Now, if you do have some slight scuffs or gouges in your frame and you want to fill those, you will have to do some slight body work with a little bit of filler or Bondo. And there's tons of videos that you can look at of how to actually do that properly. But essentially, you're going to fill those voids and then scuff down so that you level out the surface and get, again, everything down to a uniform surface with a, your gray scotch right at the end. You can use more aggressive sandpaper to sand that Bondo down or sand the frame down if needed to level it out, but eventually you wanna have that smoother, more consistent scuffing that you can use in a gray scotch right or a higher grit, like an 800 grit sandpaper or a thousand. Then after scuffing your frame, you're going to want to mask up all the important bits that you don't want paint on. Typically that's gonna be your bottom bracket, as well as an easy way to mask up your bottle bosses is to simply put a piece of masking tape on the top of the bolt head so that you don't get any paint residue inside the threads and making sure to mask up the inside of your dropouts as well. After your prep is done, you wanna thoroughly clean the frame with a type of degreaser. There's multiples out there, but essentially you wanna degrease the frame from any contaminants or oils from your hands. Making sure not to touch the frame with your hands once you're degreasing it. I like to use two microfibers, spray both of them with degreaser, wipe the entire frame down, let that completely dry. And the reason I use microfibers typically is because it's going to collect any kind of lint or dust, but certain shop towels will achieve the similar effect but I would not use paper towels. After that, you wanna spray your base coat, which is basically gonna act like a primer. Now, most colors that you're gonna be using are gonna look best under a black base coat. So the best plan of attack is to spray the complete frame with a black base. You can use a rattle can for this. All the footage you're gonna be seeing in this video is shot with the spray gun, but everything can be achieved with a rattle can as well. So don't be deterred to try this yourself. Once you spray the black on there, making sure to do light, even coats across the frame so you don't get any paint buildup or runs, you wanna let that dry based on the dry time that is on the back of the can. Typically based on the temperature, that's gonna be between 15 to 30 minutes. After that's done, apply a second coat if needed, once that's complete, again, let it cure for that amount of time. Now, at this point, if you do have any runs or any imperfections in the frame, you can go back, re-scuff, and get those runs or issues in the frame out, then apply one last coat of your base coat. Now, depending on what color you pick and what kind of fade you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna start with the color of choice. So in this instance, I'm using a Laguna Seca Blue that I'm fading from the front of the bike to about the middle, and then it's gonna kind of fade itself out to the back. Now there is no precision way to do this. You really have to take your time. So what I really recommend is decide if you want a top down or front to back style of fade or even at an angle, whatever your heart desires and kind of visually map out where you want the fade to start. So what I then recommend doing is depending on where the fade's gonna start, you wanna really lay down the paint to give a good amount of coverage on that area. Again, not going too heavy for that first coat. Do this in two to three coats if needed and depending on the color, some cover better than others. 
after your initial chunk of color is blocked in with the color that you're using, that's when you want to start doing the fade. Keep in mind you want to do this nice and light to transition it very smoothly to your other color or again the black color of choice that I did in this video. Once you start doing that, you want to work yourself around the frame, meaning you want to go from the bottom to the side to the top to the other side to make sure that that fade transition is uniform across all tubes that it's transitioning across. Now this is going to take, again, time and patience, realizing that it is a fade paint job and no one's really going to know if you meant it to stop at a certain point or not. So keep working that fade nice and slowly across, making sure to evenly distribute the paint around all tube sides. So after doing this, you want to periodically check it, looking around the frame, making sure they're all even, and continuing on to progress the fade lower in the frame if needed. In this paint job, I would be done at this point, but if you did want to fade a, another color from the back to the front or from the bottom to the middle, whatever your paint scheme desire is, you would basically do the same process, starting at the back and really covering that frame fully and then fading it up to where it mixes in the middle. Now keep in mind certain colors are going to mix better in the middle than others, so keep that in mind once you're picking your colors for your fade paint job. Once you're done with this, again, look at your paint can to allow the coats to dry evenly. So then you're going to move on to your clear coat where you're going to apply two to three coats. Again, making sure to check the dry times in between and keep in mind your weather and temperature is going to affect those dry times slightly. Once that's all built, you're all done. You can enjoy that paint job and have something totally unique to you and your bike. Now, in my opinion, I don't like to touch the bike or really build it for at least 24 hours. After that first 24 hours, if you're very careful, you can build the frame up. I typically, for me, I like to allow a full 48 hours before I take the bike on the road, especially on the dirt. And if you do want an extra layer of protection, you can wait and apply a clear 3M style of tape onto your down tube or anywhere on the bike where you are gonna have potential impact to protect that paint job you just spent so much time perfecting. So I hope you liked that video. If you wanna see more of that bike frame, it is gonna be included in a future build series of mine. So please make sure to turn notifications on and subscribe to this channel. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. I post on there regularly. And thanks for watching another episode of Locked In. Let's get